Well, thanks for being my first coffee date. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> what am I supposed to say? I don't You're welcome. <laughs> movement that encourages you to live with less. Less stuff, less possessions, less clutter, and find more joy and more time to focus on what matters. So what is minimalish? It's the grace-filled way of doing the same thing. Sustainable, realistic minimalism that actually makes sense for your life. The Minimalish Podcast is here to help you make life lighter realistically. I'm your host, Desiree, and my passion is to help you create room for what matters to you by cutting the clutter and excess stuff in your home and your life. It's not just about decluttering and having a tidy home, but about how having less stuff will give you more time and more space to focus on creating the life you actually want to live. We'll talk about topics of minimalism, motherhood, simple, intentional living, and everything in between here on the show each week. Let's walk towards simple together. Hi, friend. Welcome back to the Minimalish Podcast. Today, I am so excited to share the first coffee date episode with you. This series on the podcast is going to be once a month. It'll be the last Friday of each month, and I'm just going to be talking with a friend all about some lighter things. Of course, we will dive into minimalism and intentional living a bit on each of these episodes, but the point is to just lighten it up and have fun and just have a conversation. Really, what I want it to feel like is that you're having coffee with us too, because in all reality, if I could, I'd have coffee with every single one of you. I personally love coffee and conversations with good friends, so that's really why I wanted to do this on the show. I wanted to invite you into that. So for my first episode, I wanted to do something fun and bring on my husband, Nick. And if you have listened to the very beginning of this podcast, the first episodes, you'll know that Nick and I started this podcast together. It wasn't called Minimalish. It was called the Minimalist Family Podcast. And we started out just talking about how minimalism was changing our lives. And I continued it. After a few changes, I found Minimalish to be pretty much one of my favorite things to do throughout the week. But now I am bringing Nick back on we're catching up well you you're getting to catch up with him obviously i see him every day and i hope that you enjoy this episode we tend to laugh quite a bit in this episode so apologize in advance for um any strange audio because of that and i really hope you enjoy this conversation that i had with my husband a little bit about nick before we get started if you haven't listened to our beginning episodes and if you don't know yet nick is a elementary phys ed teacher he likes to say that he has the best job in the school because every kid loves pe and he gets to be like the superhero of the school and it's so true because all of his students love him and he is passionate about what he does and he's also a wrestling coach he really contributes to the community where he teaches and he is the type of person that truly seeks to be excellent in all areas of his life and it really shines through not only in his profession but he is an excellent father and husband and I just am always learning from him he is truly an amazing person so I'm excited to share his perspective on some things today in this episode so let's just dive in grab a cup of coffee or whatever else it is that you want to be drinking right now and enjoy this coffee date with us All right, so for my first coffee date episode, I decided to bring my husband back on, Nick. And if you have listened to the podcast, like listen to the first few episodes, um, one, we're embarrassed about it. (laughs) Not really, but... I'm embarrassed. (laughs) I just don't like listening to my own voice. (laughs) But I mean, obviously, you are always going to be a beginner at something at the beginning, so... But you just do it better. Oh, thanks. (laughs) Um, But... But yeah, I wanted to bring him back on um, for this first kind of new segment that I'm excited about sharing with you all, which is these little coffee dates. They'll be once a month. They'll be kind of like an extra thing. They'll come out on the last Friday of the month. And 
today chatting with Nick. And before we get started, you want to talk about why the Minimalist Family Podcast did not continue? Why you didn't want to keep podcasting? Well, I think I just needed, needed to step away, take a few things off my plate, which I'm still trying to do. But that was one of them. And you were already doing it well, and you had a lot of great ideas to run with. And I think I was just kind of there as, you know, just a side to, I don't even know if I was helping. <laughs> <laughs> I think that you just had, yeah, you've got a lot of other stuff going on. So. And by the way, my voice does not always sound like this. Yeah. Nick has a little bit of laryngitis right now. Yeah. So it's, we're just, it's better, but it's still pretty hard for me to talk. Yeah. We're just kind of doing it. I mean, we could probably wait until his voice was a little bit better, but Right now, we are on our little five-year anniversary trip. We just took one night away from parenthood, I guess. <laughs> one night one night break. And I, I, this is my first night away from Gemma. So First night ever for you. Yes. It's a big deal. It is. And um, it's been good. So, yeah, since we're away and we have this time, we figured we'll do it now, even though Nick's voice isn't 100%. So, anyways... Let's get to the coffee date questions. Um, the first question I have is if we were, well, we are on a real coffee date. Like my, my coffee date question is if we, if we were on a coffee date, what would you be drinking? What are you drinking? I'm drinking coffee, <laughs> hot coffee, <laughs> little cream, just a little bit of sugar, like a little less than a little. <laughs> less than a little. Yeah, Nick, um, I feel like you're classic coffee drinker you just i like hot coffee like no matter frills. if it's hot or cold out it's true yeah and i am personally drinking iced coffee so i'm the opposite i like iced coffee honestly i would pick it over hot coffee I'm, most of the year i'm actually out of coffee right now i know i have this where it doesn't look good <laughs> you could try it yeah but i uh, thank you anyways i probably did it wrong i don't know i was there is an espresso machine where we are and i've never actually used one but I was curious even though we already had coffee so I made some espresso I'm almost out of coffee but anyways so we're drinking coffee on a coffee date <laughs> we're just drinking coffee mine's iced Nick's is not iced and we both like cream and a little bit of sweetener in our coffee um all right so what is something that you're loving that is making your life better that you can't stop talking about well, I'm not sure if I can't stop talking about it, but I am loving the thought of summer approaching. I think just being an educator, being a teacher, you know, you just naturally, as the year ends, you look forward to that summer ahead of the school year ending, you know, being away. And I, for me, it's really slowing down. That's, that's my season of slowing down. I know there's a lot of teachers that pick up extra jobs or do extra things throughout the summer, but that's not who I am. I like to slow down and do things I truly enjoy. So I cannot wait for the school year to end. It's, it's not that I don't enjoy my job, but it's just kind of that natural, that natural feeling that I guess a lot of listeners could think of about when they were students, when they were younger, just, you cannot wait for the summer to come. And hey, teachers feel the same way. You know, it's my profession, I love teaching, but now there's just a few weeks left of the, of the school year and I cannot wait for the summer. Yeah. I think it's kind of fun that as a teacher, you almost get to be like, have that feeling as a kid. Yeah. That's kind life. of been a part of my entire life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, this year is the first year I'm not experiencing that, but I still am because I'm like secondhand experiencing the end of the school year through you. And I am excited about it too. That's what I'm loving too, because I kind of can't wait for that kind of that schedule change, a new routine, I'll probably actually be working more this summer than you, but you've got a couple of things coming coming up. All right. Um, so on totally different note, what's something you're struggling with right now, and how are you how are you pushing through or making it through? I'm not sure if it's necessarily something I'm struggling with that I don't see a way out because I believe I have recently taken steps because I've seen that this has been a struggle. And what I'm talking about is just over committing myself. I tend to do that. I think I've done that every single single year um, that I've been uh, teaching. You know, I don't don't just say yes to the 
um, school day obligations, but I say yes to a lot of things. It's just kind of who I am when people ask me to help in areas. I tend to say yes, and that's a good thing, but um, it really is a life skill to learn how to say no and how to say yes to the right things. And I said I wasn't going to overcommit myself this year, and I definitely did in a lot of ways, but I've since um, taken steps to where I'm stepping away from a few commitments so I can really do a few things well, the, um, a few things I've kind of narrowed down in my mind, what I truly enjoy and uh, what are worth my time and enriching to me and our family. That's what I'm committing to. But yeah, what I've struggled with is I think what maybe a lot of people do is just over committing themselves and filling up their schedule. It's so easy when it, even when you say it's a focus that you're not going to do it, you say yes to one thing and you think, okay, this isn't going to add too much more. I can do that. And then you say yes to something else and it just adds up. And man, when I do something, I really like to do my best. It's just kind of who I am. And um, so I put a lot of time into my commitments. And when I have more than just a few, that really takes a toll on me and exhausts me. So that's what I've struggled with this year. But I am stepping away from things to slow it down truly for the summer and put first things first. Yeah. And I think the for you, the hardest part is like, you know, and, and probably for a lot of people, it's easy, like you said, to say yes to something. But then once you said yes, first of all, it's like, okay, we need to learn to say, to evaluate how much time something's going to take bet- a little bit better so that we don't have, we don't say yes to things we don't want to, but it's like, okay, these were all good things. I've said yes to them. So now it's like, okay, the skill of how do I actually step back from this and not feel like I'm, that was like, that's a bad thing that I'm stepping back. And I think a misconception was saying no to things is I know for me, at least I have felt that if I say no, I'm showing that I don't value what, what it is, um, whoever it may be that's asking me to fulfill a certain role or job, um, I feel like if I were to say no, that I'm not showing that I value what it is that they're trying to accomplish and do, but that's not it. I think saying no is a f- way of, that you do affirm and you show support by saying like, yeah, I'm sorry, I, you, know, I, I, you know, I just yeah. can't do it. I can't do it well, as well as you may need. I think that's just a way of helping people by, um, I don't know if that makes sense. I th- no, it does. I used to think that if you say no, you're not helping people, but I do believe when you can confidently. I totally agree with that. It's like you are like, maybe that person thinks you're the person for the job, but you're saying, no, I'm not going to be able to put my best into this and the other things that are my priorities. You <clears throat> deserve someone in this position that can and will put their best into it and not that you wouldn't want to put your best into it but yeah I think that makes total sense and I think that that is where there's like a huge misconception it's like okay I've said yes to something I'm realizing that this isn't for me but it hurts my pride maybe a little bit like I mean I'm speaking from my own experience to like say no to something I just said yes to or like you know no matter how long I've been in this position or whatever but also it feels like it feels bad. It feels yeah. like you're giving up on something. I think you something. put it a lot more simple than I did. That's why you run the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it makes sense. Um, but yeah, that's that's something a lot of people struggle with. So that that's definitely really I think cool. once you do add a lot of stuff to your schedule too, it can be hard to admit that you are not doing things well. And then you continue in the cycle of trying to do a lot of things, but but I think that's so true is that it's hard to admit when you simply are not doing things well because you don't want to admit that to yourself or to others maybe. Yeah. I, I, I have grown to admit that I cannot do a lot of things well. I can only do a few things really well. Yeah. Yeah. And that's true for a lot of, for everyone, I think. And therefore we need to have our own boundaries and stick to them, but it's hard to do that. So that's what I'm struggling with. What are you struggling with this? So I am, I guess I'm struggling with a similar thing, but it's just op- like in a totally different way. I am the only person doing all of the things that I'm doing for this podcast and just like the little community that's grown with it. And I am so happy to do it and I love it. 
but there's a lot of weird technology things that happen. And I am sorry to any listeners that have like asked me about a broken link or something. I just like it's hard for me to to do it all and make sure it's all running smoothly. Um, and then like in the same sense, that kind of has because I feel like I'm, I'm working on a lot of things right now and I'm excited about it and I care about it. It's kind of also just like a a balanced thing in looking at like my other jobs, like taking care of our home and other things that are important to me, like taking care of my own health. So I'm just working on, I just have to kind of reevaluate my own priorities and how I am tackling all the things that I care about. So with the summer coming, I'm just kind of like pushing through right now and knowing that with that new season, we're going to have new routines, a lot more time, um, so yeah, that's that's what I'm struggling. Sorry, that's what I'm struggling with. It's like a good thing, I think, to be struggling with. What's something that you are reading, watching, listening to? Anything? It doesn't have to be all of them. It can just be like one thing um, oh, that you gosh. just want to tell people about. I'll just say one thing I'm reading right now. I generally read fiction during the school year as just a way to kind of check out. And the fiction book I'm reading right now is "I'll Give You the Sun" by Jandy Nelson, and I've been enjoying that. It's a really good book. I read it a couple summers ago. It's a young adult novel, and um, we both like young adult literature for like whenever we're we've got a lot going on. It's kind of a nice, easier reads. But I highly recommend that book. Um, we won't we won't go into talking about what it's about, but I highly recommend it if you like young adult literature. That's a good suggestion, Nick. Once you picked it up off our shelf, I was excited about it. It's like you need to read that book. Um, Something I'm reading, I'm reading, I've talked about it a thousand times on Instagram, so if you're following there, there, you might know this, but Own Your Everyday by Jordan Dooley is an amazing book. I'm really loving it. It's nonfiction. It is just, it gives you kind of tools to just deal with like the stress of feeling like you need to prove, like the pressure to prove, all kinds of things. And she's going to be on the podcast soon, so... You can hear it from her. I'm not going to go into it, but that's a good book. Pick it up. And then I just got Simple Families book in the mail, which when this comes out, it'll only be like a couple days away from release. And I'll be doing a giveaway with it on Instagram. So hop on over there um, for that. But yeah, Simple Happy Parenting. Um, Danae is amazing and I am loving it already. It's a really beautiful book. So those are two things I'm reading. Um, Okay. What... What is something that you're simplifying right now? And this is a question I ask in every single episode that I have a guest on. So I had to include it in the coffee date episodes as well. What's something you're simplifying? I think I have two different answers. I mean, the easy one, the other day I was just going through clothes. I always feel like I have too many clothes. So I definitely have far fewer than a year ago. And I just went through and got rid of a good bit more. But that's not like a big focus of mine. I don't walk around thinking, oh man, I need to simplify my wardrobe. Um, but that's something I just did in action the other day. I think the big thing that's been aff- affected my life of what I'm um, really working to simplify is my focus. Just what am I truly focusing on during this season of time or the season of time approaching was summer. Um, rather than, I guess it kind of falls into the question and answer before, rather than being committed to too much, I just want to find a few things, you know, obviously apart from, you know, my family and our home being present there, what are the few things that I really want to put my focus and attention this summer? Um, So that's what I'm trying to simplify, just the areas that I'm really putting my time and work and, you know, just, um, you know, my effort to, what are you simplifying? My gosh. I'll just say what I'm (laughs) saying. Tell us what you're simplifying. <laughs> um, I'm not a very good conversationalist. <laughs> I'm forcing Nick to ask me the questions too. Uh, <laughs> because I want to answer them. I'm not going to answer them on every on every coffee date episode. But for the first one, I wanted to answer my own questions. So um, something I'm simplifying is I'm trying to simplify planning. Like literally trying to figure out I mean, I guess you could just call it getting organized, which I hate that term in a way because I feel like minimalism is supposed to help you be more organized because you have less stuff. But I'm literally talking about like organizing 
my schedule and like how I plan my days and to do lists and all of that stuff. And I'm not all about productivity, but I am all about like, I have a lot of things I want to do and like projects I want to do. So I'm just trying to figure that out. I have started using Asana, which I do really like, but I have trouble sticking to like a digital planning platform. I've also been using Google Calendar a bit, which I, I like that as well. I can't, I, I want to be, I want to like pen and paper planning. Oh, that's my favorite. I know. What, I do that very well. Talk about what if you I love. I could pat myself on the back. <laughs> you do. It's because I found a system that works for me. And what I use is the Evo Planner, E-V-O. And I mean, it really breaks it down to planning your days based upon your, what is it, your brain type. Yeah. And I'm a architect. So it structures how you, you know, you write out your gratitude for your day, your list of what you want to accomplish, how you prioritize it, right? Writing down what's the most important thing to accomplish that day, writing down something fun you want to do that day, writing down a wellness goal for the day. Um, I guess I found that I'm very much a list person and it helps me learn, it helped me learn how to prioritize what I need to get done each day. Um, to make the days and the weeks flow well, leading to e- whether it be big projects or just kind of a season that you have a l- more open time. That pen and paper, I mean, I start every day and end every day uh, with it. And it's been, a, I don't know if I could have gotten through this school year without it. I've, it has been very helpful. I've gone through two two books already of it. Yeah, because it's, I think, quarterly. Um, yeah. I, I got one because Nick... <clears throat> Um, really loved his and it was actually I, a gift that I got him for Christmas because he told me to get him it. <laughs> he said, here's a gift suggestion. That's what we do with gifts. Um, we give each other suggestions and then. Yeah. I mean, that's added actually tons of value to my life. Yeah. And so I got one and I haven't been great about using it, which is basically how I work with every planner that I've ever had. So I'm trying, like I'm really trying Right now, I'm like going to pick it back up because it is pretty cool how it has. I, I My brain type is alchemist. It's totally different than, and the setup of the journal is different than Nick's. But I like how it has the different things like what's a wellness activity you want to do today. Like it, it really helps you think through things that you might not think through if you just had like a blank piece of paper to write a to-do list. Um, So yeah, anyways, that's what we're simplifying. Um, So what is something you've been learning? I'm not sure if this is something I've been learning more so than something I've been discovering. And this may be common sense, um, but getting caught up in the technology of everyday life, of always having your phone with you, I bring that up because what I've been discovering is I enjoy starting and ending my day outside, but we've been going outside more in the morning in our backyard, enjoying coffee and just being quiet, um, at least on the weekends. And then most of every day recently, the past week or so, um, at least for a portion of the evening, I've been doing it by myself. And sometimes you join me of just sitting outside on our front porch, kind of disconnecting um, and I try to do it more so during the school year of putting my phone down when I got home. Um, and, you know, I've lost track of that. So I've been doing this to kind of help me retrack and get back on that of putting the phone away, putting any kind of like technology or watching television of just sitting on the front porch and just kind of observing and enjoying the sounds of our neighborhood. I've been really enjoying that, whether it's just sitting there or sitting there and reading. Um, I, I, that's something I've kind of discovered, maybe not necessarily learn, but just something that I would like to do, you know, more often. Yeah. We, the other day, it had just stormed and the sky looked cool. Mm-hmm. We were like, we were watching Downton Abbey <laughs> and we instead, uh, we went outside because, you know, the sky looked cool and it was, I almost grabbed a book or something. I was like, no, we can actually just sit out here. We don't even have to talk to each other. Like we can a little bit, but it was, it was really nice to just, and you have been doing that more recently. And I kind of want to do that too, because it's something that we've really lost. We're like in this age of information and there's just, you can constantly be literally learning something or watching something or reading something but there's value in just, I think, like being still or 
having a real conversation without a book in your hand that you're like waiting to start reading. I like that. Um, I've been learning about writing a little bit more. I mean, I went to school for it. I went to school for English and I've taken writing classes, but I joined a little writing community, Hope Writers, just lately. And yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying learning about that and I'm looking forward to learning more about it. All right, so my last question for you is, we started this podcast and we talked a lot about how minimalism has changed us and has added value to our lives. Um, We talked about that, like what, probably together, we talked about that in August, September. So I wanna know, since then, like what have you seen to be the biggest benefits of minimalism in your life and in our life as a family? I wanna hear that from, I talk about it all the time. I wanna hear it from your perspective. That's a big question. Just give me a couple main points. I'm trying not to give like the cookie cutter benefits that when you first learn about minimalism from somebody or a resource, hey, here are the benefits. It helps you control your finances more. It gives you more time. Um, It declutters the space around you like it has done all that. But I'm trying to think truly like a non cookie cutter answer. But I mean, all those things, they really are true. We have had more focus or we've learned more about how we spend our finances. And I think what it's brought is, it's not something I labeled because I didn't hear the term minimalism or minimalist until we did watch that documentary. But I believe it was always something that, like I believed in that you don't need much to be content and to be happy. I'm not sure if that was a big focus in my life, but in a lot of ways, it was just kind of a part of who I was. And what it's added, talking about it more and putting into practice as a family, it's brought, you know, that value of we're doing it together. Um, And I know not many people get a chance to do that because not everybody in the same household has, you know, maybe like what we've had believing at the same time together and putting it like putting it into practice together right away. But I enjoy being able to do that together to watch how it's helped you, you know, organize and manage the things of our home because I'm often gone and, you know, working. And when I come home, I enjoy that it doesn't take long. Like I really truly enjoy that it doesn't take long to clean up the house because I mean, I very much have a hard time sitting down and being content in the space I'm in and fully being present if I'm in a decluttered space. You mean it's if you're different. In a cluttered, if you're in a cluttered or, space. Yeah, if I'm in a cluttered space. It's different when I go and visit or if I'm over another per- person's home. If it's cluttered and, you know, disorganized, I don't really notice it because it's not my home. And so it doesn't, it doesn't make me feel anxious. Um, but when it is my own home, I take pride in the space that I live in. I take pride in taking care of things, not just taking pride, but I enjoy taking care of the items, the possessions I own. Um, and, and I enjoy figuring out how to use my time. Well, it's just, I'm not, I don't know. I'm not trying to pat myself on the back, but I truly enjoy it. And for that to be a part of our entire home, not just my life, but our family life, you know, that's just added, you know, just a, you know, a piece in me, you know, a piece of my heart and joy. I think that you had like minimalist values in a lot of ways already. I mean, obviously it changed certain things um, for you, but I think because it's changed the way our house runs and because it's been such a big change for me, I feel like that is like just the fact that our family is more on the same page together has been huge. Well, I just wanted to ask you that question since haven't heard your perspective on minimalism on the podcast in a long time. I guess that's it. That's the end of our recorded coffee date. We are drinking coffee together still, but I drink all my coffee. Oh uh, yeah, more coffee. We're <laughs> more coffee. We uh, maybe I don't, but I want more coffee. <laughs> I always want more coffee. Um, all right, so let's finish this coffee date off. And yeah, thanks for being my first my first coffee date on the on the podcast. Wow, I feel special. <laughs> you should. I mean, you put this on our schedule as part of our getaway, so I didn't really have a choice. Yeah, I brought the podcast with us.
All right, friends, if you love this episode, please, please, please share this one. Let me know that you loved it. Either message me on Instagram or screenshot yourself listening and, you know, tell me why you loved it, because I just want to know, are you liking these coffee date episodes? I know this is just the first one, but I just want to know if you love it. It's something new, something that I think is super fun, but I want to know that you think it's fun as well. And if you're loving the show, go ahead and give it a rating or a review if you haven't already. That is the best way to help me out, help this podcast get in front of more eyes. And I'm really grateful for that because I just love showing up here each week and chatting with you about all things intentional living and motherhood and minimalism. I really hope you enjoyed this first coffee date episode. One of my favorite things about it was that conversation we had about saying no. I never really thought of it like that. I never thought of the fact that sometimes we say yes and then we have to step back and realize we should have said no and take action in that moment. I talk a lot about saying no and the fact that your schedule should really be filled up with things that fit you and your skills and your gifts and honestly your desires as well. And of course, when we have kids, then a whole nother then a whole other thing comes into play. We have their schedules, what they want to do. And honestly, I just encourage you to really think about like the capacity that your family has for a busy schedule and say no to things that do not make sense for your family. Or even if they seem like they might make sense, I always, for me at least, err on the side of less. Less to do is best for us. And I really want to encourage you that it is okay to say no after you've said yes to something if you're realizing that it's just really not working. So I wanted to encourage you in that today because it is hard. It's hard to do that. And I don't have too hard of a time doing it, almost to a fault. I used to quit things pretty easily as a child. And now I've learned the difference of just quitting versus intentionally deciding that something isn't working for my life and it's causing you know excess strain on my life that doesn't need to be there but it's something that I now encourage my husband in a lot so I just wanted you to kind of end this coffee date episode thinking about is there something in your life that you need to say no to it might be something that you've already said yes to but that's weighing on you, that's just been a little bit too much, that's been taking the best parts of you that you need to give to something else. Are you overcommitting yourself to too many things? We don't have to do that. Like our culture tells us we do, but we don't. We do not have to be busy. We do not have to have a filled up schedule. Our lives can be filled with the things that matter to us. And we don't have to fill them to the brim with excess and other things that just aren't going to have us living at our best. Okay, another thing I wanted to mention before we close out this first coffee date is my husband and I, when we recorded this, we're on a getaway. We talked about that and we were just taking one night away for our five year anniversary and we used Airbnb. We always use Airbnb for the past five years, like throughout our entire marriage. We have used Airbnb probably at least once a year. So I wanted to let you know that I have a little code in the show notes if you would like $40 off of your first day. I highly recommend it. Honestly, it's such a low budget way to travel, especially if you are headed to a place that is, you know, a popular spot. You will find so many options on Airbnb and you will definitely find options that are cheaper than a hotel or a traditional bed and breakfast. And this weekend we're using Airbnb again. We are actually staying in a camper this weekend on a little trip that we're taking as a family so we love airbnb and if you want to try it out take it from me it's a great way to travel and you can find that referral code in the show notes click it and you should be able to get 40 dollars off of your first day okay friends that's all i have for this first coffee date episode and i just hope you enjoyed it i will see you back here on wednesday for our usual programming Can't wait to chat with you then.